The first person that told me airplanes were spraying chemicals into the sky to create artificial clouds, I really thought that person was crazy. I had a friend point out the chemtrails one day, uh, years ago, and I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, isn't that just what planes do? I laughed the first time I heard that. I said, there's absolutely no way. Does a secret government program exist that requires airplanes to spray chemicals in our skies? Is there evidence to support this claim? And if so, why is it happening? Is it to combat climate change, or could it be something more sinister? So I became interested in what was going on, started researching the issue, uh, which many people refer to as chemtrails. Came to the realization that something probably was happening in the sky. Geoengineering destroys rain clouds, it destroys blue sky, it creates just a murky white flat sky. The longer I've been aware of them and watching them, the program is, is elegant, it is exquisite. Chemtrails stands for chemical trails that many believe are being poured into our atmosphere by planes. This, however, has been dismissed by mainstream news, science, and government agencies who offer that these are naturally occurring streaks of condensed water vapor known as contrails. Award-winning weatherman Scott Stevens began to notice strange weather patterns during the late 90s. What I learned is I'm not forecasting the natural processes of this planet anymore. I have to anticipate, not forecast, but anticipate an agenda. I truly thought as I began to, to talk and to share my observations that there would have been a fairly healthy movement to investigate these things. I knew that I would lose my job. I just didn't know how quickly it would happen. We used to see you know, occasional contrails, little short trails that right. would dissipate of jet exhaust, but now we see these lingering chemtrails and you'll see grid spraying and the planes go back and forth, back and forth, and you'll see trails go horizon to horizon. This isn't water vapor. This is material being put in the atmosphere, and I could compare this with a skywriter. When you see someone doing skywriting, that's not water vapor, it's material that sticks. For those who do not believe, if you look at time lapse and there's plenty on the internet, you can see what aerosols look like uh, in our atmosphere. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. If chemtrails play a role in modifying the weather, what could the possible reason be? During the Vietnam War, Operation Popeye was a top secret campaign that successfully weaponized the weather, causing extreme flooding in supply lines. In 1996, a detailed research paper was delivered to the Air Force outlining steps to own the weather by 2025 for military purposes. A 2008 workshop at the Council on Foreign Relations discussed reversing global warming by geoengineering. They also pointed out the significant risks it could impose worldwide. During the 2008 Olympics, China boasted that they would have perfect weather for their opening ceremony by weather manipulation. So if the Chinese can do this, and if there's technology to do it, why would we believe that weather events here are natural? It's no longer experimental. Weather modification is a full-blown operation. The military-industrial complex knew that they needed to have the weather on their side for their next war. And that was the goal. To control the weather is to control the population and weather as a weapon has always been sought after by militaries going back many, many decades, even prior to World War II. So there's no debate, there's no dispute. This is not a theory, it's not conjecture. These programs are going on, plain and simple, and, and anybody who truly does any investigation will get to the bottom of this, and it's the biggest elephant in plain sight in human history. What they're doing is selling these programs to the public as a, a way to mitigate global warming. And, and the theory is putting these chemicals into our sky will actually reflect sun back into space and, and thus cool the planet. The problem with this is at night, the aerosols actually act as a blanket and mm -hmm. they trap heat. In the past 10 to 15 years, we've seen a great increase uh, in nighttime highs. So the question really remains, what is the objective of these programs and why would they implement something that's so damaging uh, to the planet? 
There have been over 160 U.S. patents filed starting in 1891 that pertain to weather modification. In June 2016, then-CIA Director John Brennan spoke at the Council on Foreign Relations. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other geoengineering initiatives. Is it possible that this or similar proposals have been in operation for years? And if so, what are they spraying? And could it have an impact on our health? Again, what we see in the sky matches what geoengineers deny they're doing, but state that they want to do. And what we're finding around the world matches not only uh, what geoengineers are proposing, but a number of geoengineering patents designed to specifically spray these toxins into the planet, which are aluminum, barium, and strontium. Things that are connected with heavy metals are skyrocketing. You know, record amounts of asthma, autism, and Alzheimer's is being found in younger and younger patients even in their 50s. So something is going very, very wrong. Without question, it is in the air that we breathe, so we're inhaling this. Is this a failed project in an attempt to save the planet from global warming, or an operation to manipulate the weather for profit, or war, or something else? And what can we do about it? Everybody can play a profound part to help this issue come to light. We have flyers on the, on the front of geoengineeringwatch.org that people can download and print. And when the people who are aware of this collectively stand up and say no, these programs will come to a halt. We have to first clean the air, but we have to clean ourselves. Uh, we need to heal ourselves from this. So um, there are different vitamins I take that will block heavy metals in the body, and there are uh, supplements, uh, herbs that I use to chelate heavy metals out of the body. So I'm not as debilitated anymore by this. We will be able to restore a fragile planet that's been molested in so many ways. Weather modification technologies are real. There is compelling data that suggests chemtrails may be evidence of a clandestine climate control program. Although if this program does exist, it is still unclear why it is kept so secret. Since 1996, chemtrail activists have been dismissed by mainstream news, science, and government agencies. But this movement seems to be gaining momentum in the general public in light of the climate debate. Exploration into this topic is unique, as it is available to everyone. All one needs to do is look up.